All right, if you were uh, maybe one or two actually uh, wanted me to talk about um, the TL431 programmable voltage reference. Um, it's a strange little part. I use them all the time. I really like this part. So uh, let's, uh, let's talk about some first concepts. Before we talk about the part, let's talk about some concepts. I think it will help you understand the part uh, better if we go through some basics first. Um, let's say we have the circuit. We have uh, uh, some voltage going through a 1K resistor, and it's going through some current. Okay, so this is a, a schematic diagram for a constant current source, okay? Let's say we've got 12 volts coming into this thing, all right? And let's say we have 7 milliamps of current. What's the voltage on the output, okay? This is, this is, this is ground, right? So we have, we have, we have uh, 12 volts and we have 7 milliamps flowing here. So what's the voltage here, right? It kind of looks like, oh, well, it's ground because you have it here. Now, this is a current source, so uh, what does this mean? Well. If you remember, uh, voltage equals current times resistance, okay? So we know the resistance is 1K, and the, uh, and the uh, current is 7 milliamps, so 7 milliamps times 1K. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we have, get out a calculator if you don't trust yourself, 1,000 times 0 0.007, uh, we have 7 volts, okay, 7 volts. So 7 volts where? Well, you have 7 volts across the resistor. V equals IR means the, the voltage across this resistor is 7 volts. So if you measure from here to here, you get 7 volts. All right, that's what we've just calculated. But we want to know the voltage here. Well, it's 7 volts here, but it's 12 volts total. So if this is 7 and it has to add up to 12, then this must be at 5 volts. We have to have it add up to 12. So the V output will equal 5 volts, right? So I hope that, I hope that makes sense. You might, might want to pause the video, go back and check all of this. You have one K resistor with seven milliamps going through it. You'll have you'll have seven volts across the resistor, but you have twelve volts across the whole thing. So you're going to have to have five volts here in order for to satisfy the equation. Okay, so that's one concept. Let's talk about another concept. Another concept would look like this: we have a one K resistor, and we have a strange diode. Okay. We have plus 12 volts here, and we have V out, okay? And uh, these diodes are called Zener diodes, Zener diodes, and you get to choose voltages. There's certain voltages that are available and so certain voltages are that are not available. And let's say that we have a 5.6 volt Zener. That's pretty common volt, uh, pretty, pretty common volt, uh, voltage Wiener, 5.6 volts. So what's the V out? Well, it's 5.6. All right. So uh, if we have 5 volt, 5.6 across the Zener diode, then we have to have 12 minus 5.6 across the resistor. And so we could calculate the total current flow, right? We would have 12 minus 5.6, okay, divided by 1,000. Okay, so 12, 5.6 minus 1,000, we would have 6.4 milliamps, okay? So the Zener diode will have 6.4 milliamps flowing through the, thro throwing, flowing through the, uh, through, through here. And um, so now that we kind of understand that, you know, currents and voltages and stuff, let's talk about, let's talk about this strange part. Um, this strange part is basically a programmable Zener diode. That's the way you can kind of think of it. It acts, it acts like a Zener diode. Whatever voltage this is, that's what's gonna come out here. So if you have 12 volts coming in and this is magically five volts, and then your output's gonna be five volts. Um, and it's programmable. So it has this funny extra pin. So it's a three pin device. 
you have a anode down here, you have a cathode up here, and then you have this reference pin. And this reference pin uh, sets the voltage of this thing. Now, if you do what's shown here, you just tie it to the input, the voltage reference is always 2.5 volts. 2.5 volts, okay, so 2.5. So if you just tie this here, then the output will be 2.5 volts. But you can do uh, a fancier thing, and let me show you the schematic of what we're gonna be looking at. I'm gonna be taking our uh, LM431. Oh, actually it's a TL. TL431, I don't know if LM is the right way. TL, TL431. And we are going to hook it up this way. Now remember we have our cathode and our anode. We have our 1K resistor. We have, let's say this is 12 volts. Okay. What's the voltage going to be on the output? Well, the reference voltage is always going to be 2.5. So we're going to have 2.5 here, right? And we have this potentiometer. So if we have it set to 5K, 5K, right? 5K, 5K. If we have 5 volts here, then halfway will be two and a half volts. So if this is set to 5K, 5K, the output will be five volts. The other way I'd think of this is this device will source current or sink current, however you want to think of it. It will sink current such that this voltage here will always be two and a half. It'll, it'll just start sucking current until it pulls it down hard enough so that you'll get whatever the resistive divider here is to get to 2.5, okay? So let's, uh, let's go ahead and hook this up and see, see how it works. Okay, I've, I've built that circuit I just showed the schematic for, it's over here. So I have uh, the regulator here, I have a 1K resistor in the back, and this is our 10K, 10K potentiometer that we can adjust. And we can take a look at the voltage here. And if I turn the potentiometer, the voltage changes. So I can make it go high, 10 volts, and I can make it go low. So I basically can go up to that 12 volts, right? I can go all the way up as far as I can, but it's never gonna quite get there, but there'll be some range, right? But if I set it to basically in the middle, 5K and 5K, that'll divide it by one half, and that two and a half volts uh, will be on the adjustment pin always, and that it will equal equal a five volt. I know I'm I know I'm not uh, using the right language for all of this, but um, we get five volts in the output because we have that resist resistive divider, and we can set this to anything we wanted to. If we wanted to set it to uh, six volts, we would just we would change that, and then our voltage divider will give us two point five volts. Uh, into the chip, and then the output will be uh, will be six volts. All right. So let's set this back down to something. Let's set it. Let's set it to here. Okay. And um, what I'm going to do is I am going to let me change the camera angle a bit here. Hopefully you can see my power supply in the back there. Uh, right now uh, the incoming voltage is 12 volts. Actually 11.993. Okay. And our output is five point, let's see if we can adjust it right around five, make this a little bit easier. If I can lower it down a little bit. It's a bit touchy because this is a single turn pot. There we go, five zero zero nine, okay? Let's change the input voltage to, uh, to 14 volts. Now we have 14 volts coming in here. Oh. 14, 14 volts. Hello, there we go. So now we have 13.989 coming in, and our output is still five volts. It didn't care. Let's uh, put in nine volts. And now we have nine volts going to the circuit with the output, 5.008. It hasn't changed at all. And so um, regardless of the input voltage, uh, it will source as much current as required in order to give you that five volts, okay? And that's the way that it regulates. That's, that's the way that it works, okay?
Let me show you a trick here uh, if you're playing with your voltmeter and you have one that has a relative button, okay? This one has a relative button. A lot of times people use that relative button to zero out ohms, but we can use it to zero out volts as well. If we hit the rel relative button now, whatever voltage is there, I'm calling zero. So if I go back to our power supply and I change it back to 12 volts, we can take a look to see if any change, if there had been any change and nothing happened. Uh, let me go up to uh, 15 volts. Let's take a look. Did anything change? No. Uh, let's go up to 20 volts. Oops. 20 volts. Did anything change? Ah, a little bit. 0 0.003. Okay. And then let's go back to 12 volts. And it came back down to 001. So if we went all the way to 20 volts, we were still only getting three, three uh, millivolts of, uh, of error. Anyway, it's a clever way to use the relative function instead of trying to remember a number. Oh, did it go up or did it go down? Yeah, just hit the relative button and uh, then you don't have to remember that it was 5.008. All right, so um, I would suggest you print out the data sheet for the, for the part and in the back, they give some uh, uh, application notes of things you can do with this. Um, here they're using it for a high current uh, series uh, uh, regulator. So they're using a Darlington pair here to get a lot of current. And then they're monitoring the output voltage here, V out. They're monitoring that. So they have it divided by R1 and R2, and that goes into the V ref. And so that's how they are, uh, uh, that's how they're regulating here. Um, if the voltage gets too high on the output, then this thing will start to sink current. And if this thing sink, sinks current, it will start turning off that, that transistor. So that's the way that circuit works. Here they've put it in to regulate a 7805 up to a higher voltage. Uh, and uh, somebody asked for a circuit like this. One, one person wanted to know about crowbar circuits. What is a crowbar circuit? A crowbar circuit is a circuit that basically shorts out the power supply if the voltage goes too high. And well, why would you want to do that? Seems kind of silly. You'd blow things up. Well, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to blow something up. And the thing that you want to blow up is the fuse. Okay? So you have this set up such that you have some voltage set here. When the, when the voltage gets too high, then uh, this will start to, uh, will start to s s uh, sink current. Um, and it will, uh, it will turn on the, uh, on the uh, SR, uh, SCR. So, the way that this works is if the voltage gets too high, this circuit turns on this SCR, which basically shorts the output. Um, when it shorts the output, you draw infinite current and then you'll blow your fuse, okay? And, and that seems kind of a silly thing to do, but what it does is it protects any equipment from getting too much voltage. So if something happens in your power supply and it goes too high, and this circuit is the last resort. It says, whoop, it's too high. I'm gonna short it to ground and then I'm gonna hope that, hope that it will blow this fuse, right? If you didn't have the fuse in the system, then th th this thing would just get hotter and hotter and harder until it finally failed. But um, whenever you have a crowbar circuit, you have to make sure you have a fuse uh, that's the appropriate fuse so that everything works fine.